Hey Tigers, welcome to your digital reteach for offspring results of asexual versus sexual reproduction. This will be a digital reteach for 7.14b. In this teak, we want to compare the results of uniform or diverse offspring from sexual reproduction or asexual reproduction. Now here's how you get credit for this reteach. Use the Cornell Note worksheet that your teacher gave you while you watched this video. Take notes and answer any questions and write your summary at the end. Show your completed Cornell Note worksheet to your teacher. They will then give you information about how to take your next retest to work on this TEAK. Okay, so let's begin. If you look at your notes over on the main idea, the first main idea we have is asexual reproduction. So go ahead and take notes on the right while we go through this section. First, let's just start with a basic definition. Asexual reproduction is a type of reproduction in which one parent organism produces offspring, and this happens without meiosis and fertilization. Now here's some sample organisms that reproduce this way. You would have things like amoebas, you'd have things like fungi, other bacteria, coral that you'd find in coral reefs, and something as simple as starfish. Now if we go to the next part of your notes, we want to look at some advantages and disadvantages with asexual reproduction. Some of the advantages are, quite simply, that they don't need to find a mate. They have the ability to just split or reproduce on their own. What this does is it saves a lot of time and it saves a lot of energy. It saves time in the fact that they don't need to go out and court a mate, they can just simply reproduce on their own. And this also saves them a lot of energy. They don't need to waste energy traveling to go find another mate. They don't need to waste energy in the process. They can just use the energy they have to go ahead and go forward with the next generation. They can also reproduce very rapidly. Something like a starfish, you might be able to cut off two ends and get new starfish to develop very quickly. Some of the disadvantages are that it's genetically identical offspring meaning whatever the DNA in one is, is going to be the same in the other. So they're almost completely identical. Where this really is a potential harm is that if there's some sort of an environmental change, that's going to be more harmful to the population of that organism because they're all going to be similar. If it affects one one way, they will all pretty much be affected the same way. And then if there's some sort of a mutation, if something goes wrong in the DNA, that's going to get passed on to every future offspring after that. So let's say something goes wrong when the starfish splits and we get one that's just not efficient, it doesn't work very well or as well. If that next generation of starfish continues to split and produce, reproduce asexually, all of the future offspring of them is going to have that same problem. All right, so let's kind of look at this in terms of a simulation. Let's say all these green creatures have reproduced from asexual reproduction. Meaning, if you have the parent at the very top of the pyramid, all the children and the children that they had were all pretty much identical because it's got the same DNA. Now let's say there's some sort of environmental change that gets introduced into this environment. Uh, for this example, let's just say there's some sort of a poison that is extremely harmful to these organisms. Well, here's the problem. If that poison can take out one of them, then anybody that gets into contact with that poison will also be killed. Since they all have the same DNA, they're not unique, anybody that comes into contact is done. And that's a major disadvantage of asexual reproduction. The offspring are just too similar. They're not diverse at all. Now let's switch over to sexual reproduction. Simple definition, this is a type of reproduction where the genetic material from two different cells combine and that's going to produce an offspring. So some sample organisms, obviously us as humans and other mammals, will reproduce with sexual reproduction. You would also have things like birds and even fish. So if we look at advantages and disadvantages with sexual reproduction, one of the big advantages is you get half of the traits from one parent and the other half from another parent. That's going to lead to a different DNA makeup in future generations, and you get some unique traits that are a little bit different for each offspring. 
and that gives you tons of genetic variation. Some of the disadvantages are that it takes a lot of time and energy for this type of reproduction. A lot of creatures out in the wild have to roam for miles and miles and miles just to go find a suitable mate. During that time, they're at risk for being taken down by other predators and may not be able to reproduce and have their genetics pass on to a future generation. The other disadvantage is that new generations need a lot of time to grow and a lot of time to develop in order to be mature enough to physically be able to reproduce themselves. So they have to remain healthy enough during that time before they can do that for the next generation to move on. This is a much, much slower process. All right, so we look at this in terms of a simulation. Let's say these different color smiley faces are some sort of organism, some sort of creature, and they do need to pair up to produce more creatures. And that's why we see such diversity. You know, we see the different colors being made after the reproduction. So now let's use an environmental change just like before. Let's say some sort of poison gets introduced to this environment. But because their DNA is different, let's just say maybe the orange smiley faces are really the only ones affected by this poison. So sure, the orange smiley faces are getting taken out anytime they come into contact with the poison, and that's sad. But the nice thing is the overall population is still very strong and there's lots of other organisms that can continue that population to move forward. Lots of the yellows, reds, and blues are still moving on. And we see that with humans. We see that with a lot of other creatures. We can adapt to environmental changes better just because there's such diversity. Okay, at this point, that's it for the video. So take a moment, go back if you need to get any more notes, and then work on your summary that finishes your essential question. Make sure your summary is in complete sentences and a short paragraph, and then show that to your teacher.